Hello everyone, welcome to Technical Voice. So finally, we are here to create our first pipeline. So to speed up the things, uh, I have created a .NET application. Uh, it's uh, a very simple application uh, in .NET 6. Let me run it uh, just to show you what exactly the application is. It's uh, a .NET 6 application. So it's running and uh, if I go to the uh, properties of this application just to show you the you know it's a .NET 6 application in Visual Studio 2022 and I have also pushed this application to uh, Azure Repos so you can see my last videos uh, to see how I have how to upload or push code to the Azure DevOps so uh, this is our application in uh, .NET 6 and uh, I just build it and run it and it is working fine on my machine and this is also uh, available on Azure DevOps so let's create a pipeline of the CI pipeline for this project so for this uh, navigate to pipelines so currently we don't have any pipeline so let's create our first pipeline click on it so there are two ways to create pipeline the one is the yaml and the other one is the classical editor we will discuss uh, about what's the difference between and when to use when uh, but uh, for this video I am going to use the YAML. In the next video, we will create the same pipeline with the uh, classical editor. So, in the first step, you need to select where exactly your code is available. Is it on the Azure Repos Git? Is it on the Bitbuck Bitbucket, GitHub, or any other Git repository? So, you know, our code is on Azure Repos Git. So click on it and now it will show me all the available repository so we have my app which is the uh, .NET 6 application so click on it so it is asking me about uh, what exactly the .NET framework you need to use or what exactly the other framework you want to use for example if there is any Android or if there is any Java application anything uh, the project can be on you know the .NET application the Java application the Python application so you need to select the framework uh, that uh, is the your project is using okay so there are many many options available so you know we have the dotnet core application so we will select the sv.net core okay so click on it so it's just created our first pipeline yaml so let's review it so the first thing is the trigger that means whenever something change in the master branch of the uh, repo that we have selected in the second step this pipeline will run so what is pool and what's the image name so as in the last video I have already discussed that what is self hosted and what is Microsoft hosted uh, uh, agents so this is exactly the agent uh, where our application will be built so it says that the image is windows latest okay so we can also use self hosted that we will definitely see in the later videos so these are the variables uh, that you can use throughout our, your uh, yaml uh, file for example if this is the you know for example build configuration and if i search is you, you can see that the configuration is using there so you can uh, create variables uh, as needed in your yaml file uh, that can be used throughout the yaml app, uh, file 
so these are steps uh, so the first steps is to install the NuGet uh, packages that is using in the application and then the settings uh, the solution is uh, you know the first task is to build the application and uh, which things we need to build it is a solution and where is the solution and solution is the dot sln file and uh, ms build arguments so you can ignore these things because this is uh, you know uh, related to uh, machine configuration I mean where the uh, builds uh, things will be on the machine so, so the what is a platform and configuration so the you know platform is any CPU and release so if you go to your local machine and click on the solution and go to properties so you can also configure these things there so this is exactly we are configuring in the pipeline okay and uh, also uh, if you want to see the you know file extension for example this is the dot sln file that we are using to build so these are all the configurations and uh, that's it and let's run it or create it save and run so it's asking me to commit the yaml file into the master branch so if we want to change in the future we just open and change our yaml file okay so let's save and run so our first pipeline just get in and it is being run so let's click click on the job so it's about to start it's just initialize the job so you can see the agent name was if you click on it agent name is the hosted agent and um, it's the agent machine name so Microsoft assigned this uh, you know machine to build our project so every time the pipeline will run uh, some random machine will be assigned to uh, run the pipeline so it's just check out then installing the NuGet and then NuGet command and then build it and currently we don't have any test uh, we will also add the test uh, to see how if if any test is failing then our build will be failed and this is just pass the pipeline so our we just created our first pipeline and it is you know uh, can it, it's passed now so if we want to run it again we just click on it and run the pipeline so whenever some change is happen in this application this pipeline will be run so let's go to our you know uh, application and uh, let's go to the program.cs file and some you know uh, create some you know issue let's say that uh, I just type a typo and now th this is some this is a some error so if I build it you will still uh, you will see the error in the builds so let me commit it now oh there are too many commits I just want to commit the program file stage and let's say changes change in program file and commit stage and push initializing the push as far as we push some changes it said the pull and then push actually we 
have created the YAML file then that's why it's asking for pulling the branch and then push so as soon as we push new changes you will see that our build pipeline will be run so if we go to pipelines click on it you can see now our pipeline is just running it's just start and if I click on it and click on the job and now it's just check out you get things and when it will it will be failed So you can see now our build is failed. So why it is failed? If you click on it and you see that could not, uh, it will show what exactly the error is. Uh, so the value will be test string, could not infer type, and build failed. And uh, where exactly the issue is? this is the error the type or namespace AST could not be found so you, you know that we just uh, if I go to the program we just get it AST so let me remove it and check it again stage changes change in program file commit stage and push so so it's just starting the build again if you click on it this time it should pass So, initializing the job, assigning the, you know, agent machine name. So, you can see that every time a new machine name has assigned to this pipeline because we are using the Microsoft Austrian agent. Snigger so, saying and it will build it and this should build this time. So whenever anything change in the target repos of this pipeline, the build will run automatically and also you will receive the email about, uh, you know, uh, what that the build has failed or build has succeeded. So you can also configure the Slack and Teams that we will also see in the uh, later videos that if uh, build fail or build pass you will receive a notification okay so you can see that I am receiving the uh, status of my pipeline so in the last uh, email I received that my build is failed and uh, you know the all information what is the reason it is failing so whenever some uh, some change happens in the repos the pipeline will run and I will receive the notification about the uh, status of the pipeline so now I received another email that my bill is succeeded so this is how you can uh, uh, create the pipeline uh, with the YAML uh, so this was a very simple uh, pipeline just to show you how you can create it so this was our first CA pipeline in the next video we will create the same pipeline with the uh, classical editor okay thanks and bye bye